So today is pretty exciting here in the United States. It's February 28, 2024. And today this came out, the Fujifilm X106. Let's unbox it. So thanks for joining me on this video. It's gonna be a quick unboxing video, no frills. So if you've been watching this channel, you know I'm a Sony shooter. Before that, I was a Canon shooter. So I've been in uh, photography for 20 years, about 10 years Canon, 10 years in uh, Sony land. And this is my first Fuji camera. And um, I just jumped on the bandwagon, I guess. And so if you're out there, you probably have one of these. It's a really popular camera, or maybe you're waiting for yours. So let's go ahead and unbox it. I'll just uh, give you some of my first impressions coming from a Sony shooter. So here it is. Uh, thanks again to my local camera shop, Horn Photo. That's where I get all my cameras. And uh, thanks guys for hooking the brother up. And now, uh, just a quick read of the package contents. It says, digital camera X106 rechargeable battery, lens cap, USB cable, and shoulder strap. So, all right, let's go ahead and unbox it. Um, like I said, it's my very first Fujifilm camera and excited to uh, compare it to what I've been using. So here is paperwork, more paperwork about Capture One. That's software, here we go. I got the silver and black one. Here it is. Cables and all that other stuff that was listed. We got shoulder strap, USB cable. Looks like USB A to USB C. We have a, uh, what is this? I think this is for the shoulder strap. It looks like, yeah. And the battery. And here is the X106. There you go. Let's look at the top. Here's the bottom. So I was curious about the bottom plate because um, even though I've never owned um, the previous X100, um, v from what I've heard this is a slightly thicker by like two millimeters uh, because it includes IBIS or it includes in a stabilization unit inside so it, that made this thicker and supposedly the thread at the bottom is in a different spot if you've owned the previous X100 V you can comment or you can let me know if that is the, if that is true or not but here it is. I mean, you know, this is such a legendary camera and as far as the perspective of a Sony user, I always hear about it and people rave about it. The only experience I've ever had was the original X100 uh, from Fuji and that was like, I don't know, 2012 or something like that. A photographer friend that I, I shared an office with, um, he got one and uh, I thought it was cool but it was so slow and it was just kind of like it, it felt like a toy back in the day i never really you know thought much about it but i did love the style of fujifilm cameras back in the day and it hasn't changed much and obviously because it's a retro design dude totally you know this this feels totally right up there with my film cameras i have a pentax k k100 or k11 i forgot i have a hasselblad 500 cm and this feels, it, it feels like it's a retro camera. And then the only things that really give it away are, are the, the, the dials and I mean the buttons that are a little bit more modernized and possibly the lens, you know? So um, let's see, I don't even know how to take off this lens cap. It's just, it's just a pull off lens cap. There you go. So this camera has a fixed lens. It's a uh, 20 something millimeter lens but the equivalent to a full frame 35 millimeter lens because this is if uh, you're not familiar with the x100 series it's a crop sensor so uh, in sony world it's like an aps-c uh, size sensor i have an rx1 a sony rx1 and actually let me go ahead and grab it really quick so i got this in 2013 
and um, cool thing about this camera is super compact right without the viewfinder that's detachable right here this is a really small camera and I got this for traveling uh, just kind of my fun camera and it's a full frame camera just right off the bat you know I'm kind of like a gearhead and um, technology wise I was just kind of blown away with how Sony has is always like kind of pushing the boundaries of, of um, technology you know fitting a full-size sensor into this tiny body so and um, but you know what Fujifilm has got Sony beat as far as like styling um, just just retro styling I mean really the retro styling is is kind of the big draw on, on this and why it's so popular and and honestly the, the the long heritage of film cameras you know that's been just iteration after iteration it's just a kind of like a tried and true design and they really honor that design and no wonder it's so popular but first time touching this holding it in my hands it feels pretty awesome I mean it, it I, I understand the hype and yeah so let's just go ahead and kind of look into it give you my more of my first impressions clean it off a little bit it's a brand new camera let's treat it nicely so right off the bat let's go from front to back the lens is super tiny it's cool I mean it's a fixed lens and it has an aperture ring right here nice and clicky this lens is a, a 23 millimeter lens equivalent to 35 millimeter full frame and it's an f2 so that's the lens the f2 lens 35 millimeter equivalent it, it looks way cool I mean I, I love just the viewfinder it is a hybrid optical viewfinder so I look in there I can see right through and see real time and um, we'll have to turn it on and uh, later on when I charge the battery and this is just an unboxing first impressions kind of thing uh, on and off switch right here and then right here is the dial so this is let's see so when you click it that is it looks like shutter speed yeah so that's the shutter speed and then okay so it's a push pull type of a dial so when it's pressed in you are controlling the shutter speed and right at the end there is an automatic you're in auto shutter speed and it goes from four thousandth of a second all the way to T. One second and then T and B. So I guess B is bulb. So as long as you hold the shutter button or press it, you know, that's how long your uh, exposure is going to be. T is, I'm guessing, timed or something. We'll see. Maybe if you put that, it's a longer time, maybe. So. That's probably, you put it on T is my guess, and then you go into your display and tell it the exact like um, amount of time, maybe. That's my guess. Let's see, what else? Uh, up here we have the shutter, obviously, the on and off uh, switch, and then this is your exposure compensation dial right here. So that is the plus and minus dial, and there is, seems to be like a custom button right there. Seems like a custom button, cool. As far as the front as well, let's, I missed a couple things. There's a flash right there. It's uh, right, almost right above. It's a little bit off center from the, the lens. Um, this, I believe, is a dial for you, for the uh, viewfinder. So you can activate the, uh, the hybrid viewfinder or go to optical or go maybe to just fully uh, digital viewfinder is my guess. Um, right here is your front dial feels really nice dials feel great man um, it's no complaints there the clickiness doesn't feel cheap and uh, I, I've always wondered like how am I gonna change the ISO and I, I now it's so intuitive that you just pull this and change your ISO that way so if you pull on this dial you change the ISO right there super smooth on changing that dial um, it goes all the way from uh, automatic uh, 
125 all the way, you know, then it goes to 400, 800, all that stuff. The highest ISO is 12,800. And there is a C, which is maybe a custom, is what I'm guessing. Going to the back right here, um, we have this flippy screen. This screen is, let's see, let's figure it out. So this is nice, you can see all the way down, like a waist level viewfinder. Cool, it goes 90 degrees, even more than 90 degrees right there. And then uh, comes out like that. Viewing angle, that's the viewing angle from looking from, if, if I'm shooting from above my head. Not bad, I think. Well, compared to my RX-1, this is a fixed screen, so way better. And plus, this is, by the way, you know, this is just all I know as far as compact cameras. I'm not comparing this to my, you know, interchangeable lens, um, mirrorless cameras, like my, my A7S or A1, all that cool Sony mirrorless cameras, you know? So I'm just comparing it to what I know. And, um, yeah, just giving you my first impressions here. So most of the time, this is kind of, you know, this is the most useful angle for me, but just looking down at it, like so I can shoot from the hip or shoot from my waist or shoot from my chest. The back here, here's the uh, viewfinder button here that says drive and delete, then an AEL, AFL, so the auto exposure lock and um, auto flash lock, I guess, and then the back dial so if you're not used to camera controls this the way you use the dials you'll usually put the shutter speed in the front or another you know some control in the front and another control in the back so maybe aperture and shutter speed you can hopefully do that so you don't have to always use this you can hopefully use this as a uh, uh, exposure compensation hopefully so you don't have to use this dial but either way it doesn't matter I'm glad that um, those two dials are there. That's cool. There looks like a there's an LED um, light right there. So there is a little Q button right here. I don't know what that is, but we shall find out. Um, there's also a joystick right here, little tiny joystick. So it, it kind of feels like it's, it feels like retro as well, like maybe in, from the 80s or late 80s. I guess, you know, that you wouldn't put like a, a more modern joystick on this, I guess. But that one, it kind of feels a little bit cheapish. But yeah, we'll see how, how it handles and how it responds as I, I'm using it. But here's a menu OK button right here. And then a play button for playback. And lastly is a display and back button and it also has a Bluetooth uh, icon there. So that's one thing I'm super excited about um, because on in my, um, my, my Sony cameras, I usually will shoot something and you know just download it straight to my camera if I wanna share it. I'm sorry, download it to my phone. But um, I've never been able to do that because they, uh, that function was not released until the Mark II version of the RX1. Uh, this has it. That's cool. That's a, you know, I expect to have that in a modern camera. Um, one cool thing that you know really drew me to to this camera is really the film emulations, the the, the nice JPEGs that you know, people rave about. You know, for me, if you have a good like uh, just plain JPEG, which honestly Sony really never had that. Their their JPEGs were always kind of plain vanilla, just clinical, not never inspired me let's just put it that way but every time i've seen someone you know with a fuji camera or just images straight jpegs out of camera i've always kind of like yeah that's cool i love that and um finally i'll get to experience that and um yeah finally finally so uh let's look at the sides right here is the focus modes I'm guessing MCS, M is manual, C is continuous, and S is single. That's my guess. On this, this side, I'm guessing this is our, our in and out ports. So right there, our ports, and we have, it looks like a mic remote, USB-C, and a mini HDMI. So 
I wonder, is that mic? Okay, so microphone, yeah, microphone input jack. That looks really tiny. So it's probably, yeah, it doesn't look like a standard eighth inch jack. It looks like a tiny little, tiny little guy, which is, that honestly is kind of a bummer. It looks, yeah, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like an eighth inch jack. I am kind of, I don't know, that's kind of a dumbfounding, but um, you should have an eighth inch jack, but that means I'm gonna have to have a dongle if I wanna use this as um, a video camera and use like a, like a Rode Wireless Go or something. Hopefully I'm wrong, but if that is the case, that kinda stinks, but oh well. Okay, USB-C, it looks like it's a power, you can power the camera, it has a, like a battery, like insignia on that. It also has a microphone, no, no, a headphone icon on that USB-C. I'm guessing you can use USB-C headphones and the HDMI is a mini micro, What I don't know what that is, micro or a mini HDMI. So those are the in and out ports and at the bottom, let's look at the bottom. So here's the battery door and obviously there's no battery there and there's an SD card slot. There you go. Lastly, the quarter inch thread at the bottom for your um, quick release plates and tripod. So that is Fuji Film X106. I'm excited to try this out and really um, just, just get into and jump into the Fuji Film uh, ecosystem. And I actually have a couple things I want to show you that I'm excited to use with this. Let me come right back. So uh, this here is one of my favorite camera accessories. It's a Holdfast money maker. Uh, check them out, Holdfast gear. If you haven't uh, heard of them, really, I can't I can't shoot without this because I, I usually shoot with two cameras. So for work, that's just kind of like one thing I'm really used to is shooting with two cameras. So since I'm incorporating this into my work this next year. I actually went ahead and got two X106s. So that's one thing I'm excited about is really incorporating it into that. But you're probably asking, why did you get two of these? It has the same lens. Well, I already ordered the teleconverter lens, which will convert this lens into a 50 millimeter equivalent. And since uh, this is a 35, I know that's kind of like a uh, pretty, pretty close, you know, like as far as focal lengths go. But I also ordered the wide angle conversion lens, which um, gives it a wider 28 millimeter equivalent on a full frame camera. So with those two, when it comes in, I'd love to do some tests and, you know, hopefully that will, that's like a video that I can make. And for me, it's, I want to test it anyway, but maybe it's a video that will help someone else just out there on YouTube land, you know, see if that's something that they want to do too. But shooting dual X106s would be super cool. This is like one of the more exciting camera purchases I've done in a long time. That's just not, just another upgrade on a Sony camera. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so I got these, these uh, hold fast anchors for the bottom. So I can put this at the bottom right here. And this is what this strap is for because I can um, hold, you know, two cameras at once, basically. And I'll have this one side, and then when I eventually unbox my other X106, that'll go in this left side. And I'll have the option of also putting these um, converter lenses on there. So just with these two, this, this is super light, you know, and when when these two cameras are gonna be on here. And then I can have a 35 if I want to, if I unscrew one, of, if you just leave it kind of plain like this. I can have a 50 mil equivalent if I have that uh, teleconverter screwed onto that. And I can even have a wider 28 millimeter version on this side if I decide to do that. So i um, super excited to try that out. And um, yeah, join me along, please subscribe. That might be something that you're interested in if you if you just got an X106 and uh, really want to see if that's like a setup that that intrigues you too, you know. So um, yeah, we're just all you know now in this Fuji phone family. Sup still still love my Sony cameras. Super high tech. I still plan to use that. This is gonna serve as my my test cameras for this year. 
basically. Who knows what will happen? Maybe Fujifilm is like just more of my jam and then decide to switch. But so far, Sony has been awesome for the type of stuff that I'm doing. So this brings us to 2024. These guys are like the hot ticket. Hopefully you got yours. Let me know if you got yours today or if, if uh, you got a notification of when your X106 is coming. So stay tuned for more videos on this and um, Fujifilm cameras in the hands of a Sony fanboy, I guess. I don't know, that will be the title or something. But yeah, stay tuned. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or any tips, actually, if you're a Fujifilm user, X100 user, you know, give me some tips. Feel free to put down on the comments. And thanks for watching this video, this unboxing. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Thank you.